If you want to have more control over your exports to final formats, then it's a good idea to learn all the tools in the Output Tool tab. Process recipes allow you to create repeatable sets of instructions to take your RAW files into their final exported states, for example to JPEG, TIFF or Photoshop files. To make a new process recipe, click on the plus button in the Process Recipe tool and give your recipe a name. It's a good idea to give it a name that will describe how the image is going to be exported. In this case I'll make a JPEG, which is going to be 2000 pixels wide at sRGB. Once the recipe is created, it's then the Process Recipe tool which defines what that recipe does. So in this case, uh, we said we wanted a JPEG. Uh, the quality we can adjust on the quality slider here. Uh, we also wanted sRGB. Uh, the scale was going to be a width at a certain number of pixels, which is 2000. If we want to open the image directly into something else, then we can choose so in the Open With drop down menu. In the File tab, we have control over where the image goes. By default, this will be set to Output Location. This simply means that the destination for your images is decided in the Output Location tool. Looking in the Root Folder drop down menu, Image Folder simply place the exports next to the RAW file. The Subfolder field is a very powerful feature that allows you to define an additional subfolder for the exported images to go to. You can either type freehand into the Subfolder field, or you can use a token by clicking here. A token simply takes some aspect of the metadata from the image and uses that to create a folder. It could be something really simple, like the date the image was captured. So for example, if you wanted to use that particular token, you could simply drag and drop it into the format field like so. Sample shows you how the folder will look. The Adjustments tab has additional options for controlling crop and sharpening. For example, the default is to respect the crop. We can totally ignore the crop, and if you're saving as a PSD file, the crop can be represented as a path but the full image will be exported. There are additional options for adding output sharpening here, for example for screen or for print. Choosing one of these opens up extra options, for example controlling the amount of sharpening that you would like to have. To get an accurate visualization of what your output settings are doing, open any image and make sure it's set to 100% on the viewer. Turn on recipe proofing by clicking the spectacles icon in the toolbar. Capture 1 will then represent the image as it's been set in the process recipe. So in this case, going back to the basic tab, our width was set to 2000 pixels. So now we're looking exactly at 2000 pixels on the screen. The ICC profile, the JPEG compression quality will all be shown here. And of course, also the scaling. Going back to the adjustments tab, as we play with our output sharpening for screen, we'll also get an exact representation of how the image is going to look. When you finish setting up your adjustments, simply turn recipe proofing off, and the image will zoom back to 100%. The metadata tab gives you options on what metadata to include in the export, for example, rating and color tag, copyright and so on. Additionally, if you've annotated your image or been using an overlay in the overlay tool, you can also choose to add this as part of the image as well. If your export file type is a PSD file, this will be added as an additional layer. Finally, a watermark can be added to the image, either as text or an actual image like your company logo. The output location tool decides on the final destination of your images. Remember in the File tab, if you have Output Location set here, Capture One will use whatever information is set in the Output Location tool. The destination can be chosen by using the pull down menu here, and clicking the small arrow to the right will actually take you to that destination as well. Once again, a subfolder can be defined either by typing manually or by using a token as we did earlier. Images can be renamed in the Output Naming tool. Again, it's a similar principle by using tokens. 
Image name is the default, and that will simply use the name already defined on your raw files. Finally, the process summary tool tells you which recipes are being used. You can use more than one simply by checking them on. To start images processing, simply decide which images you want to export and press the process button. An orange cog will show in the corner of each thumbnail, showing that it is waiting to be processed. It will turn white when the process is finished. To see how the process queue is going, click on the last tool tab and then you'll be able to see all the images that are ready to be processed. To stop the queue at any time, click stop. And to start the queue again, click start. To remove an image from the queue, simply stop the queue, select the image, use backspace on your keyboard to remove it, and start the queue once more.